What you're seeing is a tunnel, but you already knew that. This tunnel is meant for the future, and its main goal is to replace air transportation with trains, something called the Hyperloop. You might be familiar with this train, the fastest train in the world right now. This train was recently built for Japan and it moves with an electric magnetic force and that is why it's the fastest. It moves on wheel, when it speeds up it lifts off and it basically moves on the track without any friction which is amazing. And since it doesn't have friction it could reach more than 600 kilometers an hour. But the Hyperloop technology is gonna go way faster than this because the engineers that are working on this say Hyperloop can go faster than 1000 kilometers an hour and that's about 600 miles an hour to be exact. When it reaches this, that means it's faster than passenger aircrafts that move around 900 kilometers an hour. And this means you can go from Los Angeles to San Francisco in about 35 minutes. When something like this is available, someone could live in Los Angeles and decide to work in San Francisco. And because of the Hyperloop, they can just go there whenever they need. Hyperloop is not a new invention whatsoever. In the year 1904, an engineer by the name of Robert Goddard became the first person that came up with the idea of having trains in a tunnel that could move extremely fast. But there wasn't enough time and resources and technology for Robert Goddard to continue on this and he went on and made different types of rockets which is what he's known for. Goddard's idea of a hyperloop was forgotten until 109 years has passed and someone is reading about this. And that someone happens to be Elon Musk. And Elon Musk decided to actually make this thing possible. He studies this and he comes up with a 58 page article on what this thing will look like and what are the problems with it. Musk basically breaks down what are the dangers of it, how it will work, what's it going to cost, is it worth it? He writes all of this in the article. And because of this article, not only did the boring company, the Hyperloop company for Elon Musk start working on this, but it made Virgin Hyperloop. It made Hyperloop TT and many, many more companies start working on this project. The fastest train currently is in Japan, the one we showed you. And just like we said, it works with magnetic levitation, which is called maglev. Magnetic is obviously the way it gets the power and it levitates it and you could say it kind of swims through the tracks instead of having friction on the rails. But a hyperloop wants to move in a tunnel that has contact with nothing, not even air. The Japanese train works with maglev but it's still not in a tunnel and it could move in an open area and obviously that's gonna slow it down. But on the other side, a hyperloop is supposed to work in a vacuum. What do you mean vacuum? Is the train gonna go to space? How are you gonna make a tunnel, a vacuum, in a tunnel this big too? A tunnel for a hyperloop is designed in a way where there is no extra skin or space between the tunnel itself and the train itself. So it's a very tight area. When you're moving in a car at about 100 kilometers an hour and you roll down the window and stick your hand down, you're hit with a tremendous force of the air that wants to push your hand back. Obviously, this is the air slowing you down and that's why the more aerodynamic your car is, the faster it could move and more fuel efficient it's gonna be. But just imagine you're moving in a tunnel that's a vacuum and you stick your hand out. You're not gonna feel anything. It's almost as if you're not moving. So how is it possible to make it a vacuum? First of all, you need vacuum pumps where it literally sucks the air out of the tunnel. So how do you actually turn this tunnel into a vacuum without air replacing it? Is every nook and cranny going to be closed? These extremely powerful vacuum pumps do just that. 
move a lot of air out of the tunnel. And if you could imagine, if the tunnel is not strong, it could literally implode the tunnel. But obviously, the Hyperloop tunnel is very strong, it's not gonna do that. The vacuum pumps that are supposed to do something like this are engineered extremely well just for this. And the best company to do it is a company called Leibold. This company invented the vacuum pump about 150 years ago. So they're very experienced in this department. In Elon Musk's article, it says, if you put these massive vacuum pumps every 10 kilometers apart from one another, it will be enough to create a vacuum throughout the line. When you have a machine that moves in a tunnel where there is no air and it's used magnetic levitation where it doesn't have any friction with anything, it could move extremely fast with not a lot of energy. And that's what makes a thousand kilometers an hour possible with a train. It's good to know that Virgin Hyperloop was the first company to actually design this, make a tunnel, and test their own Hyperloop train to see what it's gonna be like. The reason it didn't reach the full potential of speed is because the tunnel wasn't built fully. It was a section and it was only meant for testing. The train Virgin tested was extremely powerful because it reached the speed of 160 kilometers an hour in just six seconds. You can't imagine a Hyperloop like a normal train you see where it's very long. A Hyperloop wagon is basically a mini bus where about 28 people fit in each one and they can move in single file line behind one another. Elon Musk has an idea to connect San Francisco and Los Angeles with Hyperloop and if it's done correctly, it will replace driving there which takes about 6 hours down to 35 minutes. The responsibility for something like this is extremely high. Just imagine you have a Hyperloop tunnel where tens of different wagons are moving behind one another. Each of them have a speed of a thousand kilometers an hour. And if something goes wrong, everything is gonna go flying into each other and obviously everybody will die at that speed. Musk has also written in his article that you have to be 100% certain that everything is perfect before you actually sell it to the public. Even if there is no accident, just imagine electricity runs out and you get stuck in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the desert and there is no oxygen because you're inside a vacuum. So all we're trying to say is there is a lot of safety precautions that need to happen before we use it. We said earlier that Elon Musk wants to go from San Francisco to Los Angeles with Hyperloop, but the UAE has paid Virgin Hyperloop to test their first design from Dubai to Abu Dhabi. But when are Hyperloops gonna be ready? Virgin, Elon Musk, Boring Company, Hyperloop TT, and plenty of other company are all saying the year 2030, and we could have a few active lanes by then. You might say we have to wait seven years for the first one to be available, Yes, that's not that bad when you think about it, because when the first airplanes were made in the year 1904, it took 16 years for them to be properly done and be sold to the public. So for something like this, 7 years is actually reasonable. 